Hello, everybody. Doug Anderson, food and beverage manager here at Seven Summits Lodge with Chef Dino Cruz. Um, today, Dino is going to be preparing sweet Thai chili shrimp. Uh, I know there was a little bit of mix up online about uh, kind of the, the order of our cooking classes as we were closed last week for a little bit, temporarily closed. We kind of had to extend things out a week. So, um, I apologize for anybody that showed up thinking we we're doing a uh, uh, strawberry shortcake. There's a little bit of mix up here. Uh, so anyway, sweet Thai chili shrimp today is a menu item that we had on our last menu that was probably our most popular appetizer. Uh, it's one of Dino's uh, recipes and I know Joel uh, Riegers really enjoyed it when he was up here and uh, I think they're gonna start doing it down at their club as well. So um, again, this is one of the most popular dishes on our last menu, uh, one of my favorites. We also had uh, some people that kind of modified it and turned it into like a wrap of sorts. So um, really good dish. So anyway, enjoy, Dino, the floor is yours. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Doug. Welcome, everyone. We are doing sweet Thai chili shrimp. First, I wanna go through the mise en place or the, um, uh, the ingredients and tools we've gathered together to prepare ourselves for um, cooking our Thai chili shrimp. So I'm gonna go with the utensils first. We have a pair of tongs, measuring cup, high heat rubber spatula, and then uh, we have a couple options here for doing our shrimp. Um, we can use a slotted spoon or a uh, screen strainer. Okay, and then we have about, about one inch of oil is what we're gonna do. We have a heavy bottom steel pan um, with one inch of oil in it. So we're, since we don't, not everyone has a deep fryer, I'm gonna kind of just show you guys how to, how to do it um, like a pan fry style. Um, so we do have a little bit of oil. That's canola oil that we got going on there. And I have it on low right now just to kind of get it warmed up. Um, and then one of the, uh, a few of the ingredients that we have going for us, um, we have pickled, pickled red radish. So I have some red radishes here. Um, and then really simple when I pickle anything, um, homemade pickling, um, just really just a clove. Uh, sugar and red wine vinegar, uh, equal parts sugar to red wine vinegar. So this one is a quarter cup um, sugar, quarter cup red wine vinegar. Um, and I'm just gonna bring it to a quick boil. And then after that, so this is called a quick pickle. Obviously, you know, pickling something does take a lot of time, but we can, we can technically call this one a quick pickle. That way no one gets upset with us because we didn't properly do the, uh, the patience and time it requires to pickle vegetables. So uh, we have our red radish here. Again, I'm gonna create that safe bottom there so we can just kind of slice it. Um, we can go any way with this. We can do rings, we can pickle it. Um, matchstick, I'm gonna go ahead and do a matchstick style. can see me there. I'm going to move a little bit. I got to pay attention to the camera here. All right. Obviously, you can purchase uh, radish, pickled radish already. Um, you know, most likely Whole Foods or Trader Joe's possibly could have it. All right. So I have my pickling vinegar to a boil. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. I think we're only gonna need two of these radishes. It's fairly, they're fairly large. So we're just gonna do a nice little matchstick there. Okay. So I'm gonna go right into our hot, Pickling brine here. Just gonna let that sit for a minute. Okay, so that's, I'm just gonna take it off the heat, put the radish in there and just kind of let that sit there. Um, another fun thing with this uh, is the garnish. So um, the recipe says green onion. There's a few ways we can do that. So I'm gonna show you guys a few ways we can do the green onion. So first you're gonna need 
a little bowl of ice. So I have some ice in here and a little bit of water. So we have a little bit of a, a little bowl of ice, ice water in here. And that's where we're gonna put our green onions. So one thing we can do, usually I'll cut off all the edges there. So here's one option. I'm gonna show you guys one option here. Hopefully everyone can see. First option is long strands, curly. So we're just gonna, almost like a chiffonade from a few classes ago, as far as the technique we're gonna use here. Because we really wanna get a super thin, almost like a shred look. So I have a few more here. Let me finish this off. I do like to use 99% of the onion, if not 100%, um, because you can garnish with the, the wider part on the bottom of the green onion there. Um, that's an option as well. So I, I guess right now we're gonna use 100% of it. Okay, so let's see here. So I do have a little bit of the green onions there. Hopefully you guys are able to see that. So that's gonna curl up a little bit. We're gonna go ahead and put it in our ice water here and just kind of stir it around in there. Okay. Next one, um, we're gonna take the bottoms, probably about two inches. So we have, so we have about a two inch bottom here. Obviously we have some of the bottom um, roots there. So we're just gonna slice that off. Okay, so here's the bottom of the green onion. Here's the top. We're gonna slice it in half, but not all the way through. So as you guys can see, I just split it. And then I'm gonna turn it, rotate it, and do the same thing. So it kind of, now it's kind of like four of them, right? And I'm gonna keep going a little bit more, just finding out the thicker sides and just doing more slices in there. Okay, so that's kind of how it's gonna look like. We're gonna put that in our ice bath as well. And we're gonna do a few more of these. So again, slicing it almost to the root, but still intact. That way we're creating that flower effect. Okay, so it's not gonna look um, the best until it really soaks in the ice water for about five minutes, at least five minutes. I'm do a few more here. Okay. And then the last would be a bias slice of the green onion. Um, so usually I like, I like a really nice angle there. So you just kind of do a bias slice. So we have some really wide slices as you guys can see. So that's another option there. So that's three different ways. We can pretty much kind of fit it all in this one little bowl here. Just try not to mix them all up. So you have one little corner for the bias sliced, one little corner for the chiffonade, and then one little corner for the green onion flour. Okay, so we got that. So we're gonna let it sit here with our garnishes. Um, our, for our garnish, we have a little bit of black sesame seeds, a little bit of paprika, and our uh, green onions. Okay, our oil's been on low for a few minutes now. It's probably almost ready. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn it down a little bit. We are gonna make our sauce first before we get to the fun part of frying. This guy. So for our sauce, um, I think the recipe says one cup uh, equal parts of sweet Thai chili to mayonnaise. And we're using Best Foods mayonnaise as well. So I do have a measuring cup here. It's gonna get shake that a little bit. 
This is a really simple sauce, but it goes great with, um, you know, French fries, chicken tenders, um, a lot of fried stuff. It, it goes great. Okay. And then we're going to have our lemon juice. A little bit in there. So it does make a little bit extra. You know, obviously, you don't have to do a cup of each. You can do a half cup of each. But it's nice to have a little extra in case you want to uh, re-dip your shrimp in there while you're eating it or... You know, put it in an airtight container, put it in the fridge. Should be good for about two weeks. And there we go. So that's our sweet Thai chili sauce there. It, it was literally the fresh lemon juice, the um, the fresh lemon juice, the mayploy. So we're using mayploy. Hopefully everyone got that. Um, mayploy sweet chili sauce is all it says there. And then as far as the, so our sauce is finished, we set that aside. And as far as the shrimp goes, we're gonna start frying our shrimp and the coconut milk that I use, I only like to use this brand, Chowco. It's a really awesome brand. Um, although, you know, any, any other brand really works, but I, in my opinion, this is probably like the premium coconut um, milk brand, so. So we use a little bit of that in the shrimp, okay? So we're gonna proceed over here. So again, before we started our shrimp, because once we do our shrimp, we're gonna be close to a little bit more than halfway finished. So we wanted to make sure we got our, our green onion sliced up, our radish pickled and our sauce made before we proceed to the final, the final cooking here of the shrimp. So I have our flour, which is mixed with all the good stuff. Um, that's on the recipe there. I have our shrimp soaking in coconut milk, and really, um, you know, you just want to make sure it goes in the, in the flour bowl, you kind of mix it up in there, and kind of squeeze the flour on the shrimp so that way it's really getting coated. Okay. I'm going to do the same here. I did a little bit um, extra shrimp because I know, uh, I know, um, Doug probably wants to share a little bit, so. so I need a little bit more than usual. Okay. So it is advisable to use gloves for these. Um, I mean, you don't have to, but if you don't, just wash your hands thoroughly uh, before you eat or before you really touch anything else after handling the shrimp here. So. Now that we have our shrimp fully coated, I'm gonna go ahead and put on a fresh pair of gloves and get rid of this uh, raw bowl here. Okay. That way we don't have all that, that flour on our fingertips. So uh, just a quick note as well for the red radish uh, pickled. It doesn't have to be radish. Um, you can do pickled uh, cucumber and carrots. You know, maybe just uh, slice it uh, matchstick style. Um, you can do bell peppers. Uh, you can do pickled onion. Um, really something. Oh, okay. Quick change. Okay. Is it on? Okay. All right. So switching mics real quick. So again, the vegetable, as long as you have the uh, red wine sugar and, and a, a clove in there, um, really, um, that's, that's pretty basic. Um, you can add other things to it as well. Um, so, but we're, we're, again, we are just making a quick pickle. But as far as vegetables go, you know, I've, I've done it with um, onions, carrots, bell peppers, cucumber, uh, jicama, Really what we're looking for is just the, the pickled flavor to kind of help with the, uh, cut, cut a little bit of that greasiness of the shrimp so that way it doesn't feel like it's so greasy. So we have that, that light, uh, acidic, a uh, little bit of a, like a garnish that's gonna help us. Uh... So probably should have used a bigger bowl, but it's fine. So 
So it'll take probably about five minutes of frying time. Again, I recommend a heavy bottom. If you have a deep fryer, that's the best way to do it. But I do recommend a heavy, heavy bottom steel pan. It seems to hold um, the temperature better than an aluminum pan because it's a little bit thicker. So again, we're gonna change gloves again, avoid any cross contamination. So we have our clean bowl. We are gonna put a little bit of our sauce in there. I think about three ounces it says. But I'm gonna do a little bit more just because I did a little bit more than the uh, recipe for shrimp. Okay. So we have this clean bowl ready. And then we're gonna go through our shrimp. We're gonna try the slotted spoon first. Looking pretty good. So it's really just browning up a little bit here. Um, and then optional as well, you can go straight, the shrimp straight to the uh, sauce, to the pan with the uh, sweet Thai chili yoli. Um, but if you feel like that might be a little too greasy, then I do have a bowl with a paper towel, paper towel line bowl. So really it's not gonna be heavily coated. Um, it's not beer batter or tempura batter or anything like that. Although that's another option. Um, you know, there's just so many options we can do with this. Um, it's kind of like just pick one, you know, because uh, tempura batter would have worked as well. We also could have done um, uh, cornmeal like an egg wash flour cornmeal. But we're gonna do what we did at the club, which is the seasoned flour and the coconut milk. Just a few more minutes here. We're looking for, um, you know, for the shrimp to curl and also have that pink color, nice and brown. We want it to be crispy. Usually as the oil starts to quiet down, um, that's when you kind of know that the shrimp is almost done. Um, just because initially right when you put it in there, it's making a lot of sizzling noises. To me, it quiets down because the temperature inside the shrimp is nearing the same as the oil on the outside possibly. Um, we do have the strainer as well. So if you are gonna go directly to the sauce, this is the kind of strainer that you would want to use because this would definitely get most of the, it will strain most of the oil out because we have a nice screen instead of, uh, instead of this one where it's a little bit more tighter squeeze there. So it's been about three, three and a half minutes, I'm assuming. Um, we're almost there. Just trying to crisp it up a little bit. And I will put gloves on because we're gonna garnish. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here, over here actually. <clears throat> okay. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. And I'm gonna strain it. I'm gonna try and get as much as I can out of, out of one. This goes right in there. So with the screen, you have to be pretty patient, just kind of letting it drain out. There we go. Okay. A few more here. Okay. Let's sit there real quick. And then we have our spatula, which we're actually not gonna use for high heat, but. Okay, and we're gonna stir our, our shrimp in there. It's kind of gonna be a little bit of a gooey mess, but a delicious gooey mess. And then we have our, so we have a, I think I'm gonna use the white plate for this one. 
I wasn't super sure, but we do have our shrimp in there. So if you guys have had it at the club before, I believe we served it with a grilled piece of bread. It just kind of, I don't know, it kind of helped. Uh, maybe you can eat it on the bread, you know. I mean, it really, really depends. But so we have our shrimp all tossed up in our sauce there. And then we're going to garnish it. We're going to do our paprika first. Just kind of dust the paprika on there around the plate. There we go. We have our black sesame seeds. Just sprinkle it around. And then we have... Since I put a little bit too much paprika on the little corner, that's where I'm going to put this pretty cool green onion flour that we made. So see how it, about five, five, six, seven minutes in the ice water, and all of a sudden it's like, it's like it's blooming. So that's where we'll put that. We are going to also put a little bit of our other green onions on there. And then the chiffonade one looks pretty cool as well. So it just kind of looks like a, a big old curly right there. So that's how it looks. And last, uh, last thing we're going to do is the pickled radish, which I'm probably going to make sure um, the pickled radish, you don't want to try and get too much of that uh, vinegar on the plate. So you can actually strain it if you'd like. But for us, we're just going to squeeze it so maybe we'll just put it like right here so it just kind of adds a little bit of color and of course flavor okay so that's it um here we go i don't know where my camera is. so it's kind of a nice little treat there we have our uh, nice garnishes. Uh, it looks really colorful and it's uh, ready to be eaten. All right. Um, that's all we have for today. Uh, thank you very much.